What's going on guys, Lawson here. So, a little bit of a different video today. I'm gonna be going over how to catch live bait, more specifically live mullet. I get people asking me all the time, yo, how do I catch live bait? And if you use it, you know it's one of the best ways to target big fish and catch more fish. So we're gonna be going over how to get that done today. Let's get at it. All right, so we're gonna get going. A very, very important thing is having a working cast net with no holes in it. I'll admit I'll be a bum sometimes and I will use a cast net until it is completely broken and I can't catch anything else in it and I'll stitch it up a hundred times but once you have a working net it's really it makes a huge difference. The other day I came out here probably spent an hour and a half trying to catch a mullet until I realized that I had a huge hole in my net and I threw on a school of about 30 mullet all the more in the net and I pulled the net tight and I watched all of the mullet dump out a hole in the back of my cast net. That can be a pretty demoralizing thing. So just get yourself a working net with no hole and it'll make your life about 10 million times easier here. One of my favorite times to target mullet, the easiest way for me in my opinion, is at low tide. They get trapped up in sandbars and that's where I like to target them. And so this will work for you whether you're on a boat or you're on shore, just find a shallow area and try to catch you some bait. Even being on shore sometimes it's easier to catch a live mullet because they're gonna be pushed up against the shore at low tide trying to kind of just stay away from fish and they get up on sandbars where they can stay away from predators, but that's where we're gonna take advantage of it and catch them. Real quick, I'm gonna give a quick explanation on how to throw a cast in if you've never done it before. This is how I like to throw it, it's kind of a easier way and it, this works well with smaller nets, nets under eight feet typically. So what I do, I grab a length of the rope right here at the lead line and I put it in my mouth right here and then reach out full length in here. And so the shorter the net, the easier it is to throw it typically, and the lighter the net, easier to throw. So if you can just do it with just a one bite and then one arm and throw it, that's great. If you struggle with that, I'll show you another way and you'll able, be able to get a little more uh, line out. <laughs> Look at that, kind of a bunch of little sand perch in there. So if you're struggling to throw it with just bite and one arm length, what you can do, same thing, start with the bite on the lead line and then throw a few lengths of net over your shoulder and that's going to help you get more net open. And so same thing, then like that and just having a few lines of uh, the lead line over your shoulder helps you open up the net better if you're struggling to open it up with just one grab here. And that's really it. Throwing the cast net takes time and practice. You really just think about when you're throwing it that you're trying to open that net up as much as you can. So that's how you're gonna catch as many fish as possible. And you don't wanna be throwing banana sandwiches as we like to call them from these bad boys. Oysters will destroy your net and ruin your life. So avoid those if you want your net to last longer than a month. Cool, you could see if we can catch some mullet. There's no way getting around it. You'll have to run down mullet in shallow areas and you can typically run faster than them or you can sit and wait for them but if you're impatient like myself, I like to run them down. And I'll be honest, I have felt and looked cooler <laughs> than I have chasing down mullet and throwing a cast net after them. But we're gonna try to run them down and see if we can catch a few. And sometimes this is just the easiest way to do it, especially when it's really sunny out like it is right now. You're not gonna have a good luck getting the jump on mullet and sneaking up on them when there's this much light and the water's clear. You're gonna have a hard time. So sometimes you just gotta run them down. That's what we're gonna try and do. We, uh, we got one in that right there. There's our perfect silver little boy right there. That is a beautiful, beautiful silver mullet. So right there, that is a beautiful silver mullet. And this size bait, in my opinion, is the best size bait you could ask for for fishing for snook, jack, and tarpon. That's like a perfect all around, beautiful, beautiful bait. So we'll let Buddy go for the moment and probably catch a few more. But I personally want, I think it's fun to chase them down, it's just goofy. And it works well because if you're in a situation you feel like, okay, they're spooking before you can even get close to them, start running those suckers down and it works. I just scared a barracuda. 
So that is something to actually really watch out for when you're running on sandbars. That's really gonna be the only thing that could ruin your day for you other than not catching bait is a stinger right there. So really be careful when you're walking around, running around, anytime you're waiting. Stinger is not gonna kill you if it stabs you in the feet or legs, but it will probably be one of the most painful experiences you ever had in your life. I, luckily enough, have never been stung by one, but I'll be honest, I will not be surprised in my lifetime to get stuck by one or two by just the nature of what I do. But they're beautiful creatures. They're not gonna hurt you if you don't just curb stomp them on accident. So talk about net size really quickly here. Like I was saying a little bit earlier, the smaller the net, the easier it's gonna be to throw. So if you've never thrown a cast net before and you're just learning how, maybe get a six foot net and that will be like still big enough to really give you a chance to catch some bait and it'll be really easy to throw. This right here is a seven foot net and it has a little bit heavier leads and this is three eighth inch mesh right here. And so the tighter your mesh, so the smaller the diameter of the mesh, the heavier your net's gonna be, and it's gonna be a little bit harder to throw just because it's gonna have more wind resistance. It's not gonna open up as easily. But smaller net holes, you'll catch smaller bait like greeny pilchards and little finger mole and stuff like that will be a lot easier. And they seem to tear a lot less than holes with uh, than nets with bigger holes in them. I've ripped so many nets accidentally cast netting humongous like five pound black mullet that have just torn up my nets. But we're gonna see if we can catch some more Schmullet. We got him, coach. We got him. Three beautiful little silvers right there. Today's video is really just for the demonstration of catching bait. I'll show you. We'll catch one more and we'll bring it back to the boat and I'll show you how to rig it. But uh, really, put in your time. We've only been throwing for, I don't know, 15 minutes of actually throwing and mostly just walking around and explaining this. It's not too hard, he's gotta work a little bit, but catching mullet can make a huge difference in having a successful day when artificials just are not working. Got a mullet. I mean, if we would have kept every mullet I've caught so far, we'd already had close to half a dozen, even more. And when I come out and fish by myself, half a dozen, that's enough bait for me. Because mullet are big bait, you know? I normally like to catch between half a dozen and a dozen per person, normally. All right, so real quick, you know, you're catching all this live bait, you probably wanna know how to rig it up right here. So, got my live bait rod I like to use for snook and jack. Big J hook right here. Circle hook or J hook, really, it's up to your choice. I like using J hooks when I'm fishing around seawalls, docks, and bridges because it allows you to whack that fish and pull them away from structure. But I'm gonna show you the two ways I like to rig my bait here. Right here, got our live mullet. If you look up underneath the mullet's mouth, it'll be hard to see on the camera, but there's a little soft spot where you barely have to force a hook in and the hook will literally just roll through the bait. You have to force it a little bit, but it's not bad. It'll roll through the bait right there, and that's your nose hook. Now, when I'm nose hooking a bait, the purpose is it'll stay alive a lot longer, and I like to use a nose hook by moving a lot, because if you're dragging your fish from behind, it's gonna drown. So this will keep him alive the longest, and it's really great for if you're flipping. So sometimes I'll be going along docks, and I'll flip it like I'm flipping a jig for bass, and just flip my mullet up underneath the dock, let him sit for a second, pull him out, reel them in, flip them on the next spot. And that's all it is right there. And so the nose hook works really well if you're moving and pitching your bait a lot. Or if you're trolling your bait, that's when you want a nose hook. Second way I like to hook a bait, one, pull this out, is right above the anal fin back here. Now, this is what I like to use if I'm not moving. If I'm almost anchored up or if I'm drifting really slow, scrape away a few fins right there, or a few scales I mean, and pop it right through and make sure your hook's clean on the other side, get the scales off it and whatnot. And so, when you hook him through the tail, he's naturally gonna wanna swim away from you because he feels that pressure pulling him. And also, hooking him in the tail seems to force the bullet 
to swim upwards. And they'll typically a lot of times swim up, unlike this one. So hooking them through the tail, a lot of times will push them up to the top, but they'll also swim away from you. So right now you can see my line is just pulling out of here because the mullet is swimming away from me right now. And if you're fishing in a position where, okay, I'm trying to drift bait, maybe you're fishing a pot of tarpon that are coming towards you and you want your bait to run towards those tarpon, hook them in the tail, throw them out, and he's gonna swim away from you. That's gonna work really well if you're anchored up, if you're drifting slow, tail hook is what you wanna do. And I also seem to have a better hookup ratio with the tail hook, I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's because it rips a little easier out of the mullet when you set the hook and so you don't end up flubbing it too much or missing those hook sets. The tail hook works really well. And then the third final way I'll show you is through the back, right below the back dorsal fin right here. Put it through right there. And so this has pretty much the same effect as a hook through the bottom near the anal fin, except this seems to force your bait to swim downwards instead of upwards. He feels the pressure in his back and it forces him to swim down, pulling from up here, and he'll swim down. Also, one thing a lot of times too, if you feel like your bait is being uncooperative and you have him tail hooked and he's not swimming away from you, a lot of times I'll just give him a smack like that and that pull makes him kind of freak out and swim away from you even further and he'll get moving on his way and get into the right position here. Buddy, thank you for your time and your cooperation. Go on your merry way. Hopefully he lives. So, one more point to point out if you're new to throwing live bait is you need to have a way to keep them alive. Now, mullet, I will say, are probably the hardiest of all live bait, but they will still die just being in a regular bucket right here. They will not last super long. Probably have a sand perch in here. A little sandy perch. Mullet will not last super long just in a bucket with no aeration. So if you don't have a live well, get a bucket and get an aerator. It's a little bubble pump and that will help tremendously they're not going to stay alive as long as if you have a live well, but it's going to increase how long they'll stay alive by tenfold. Where when I was younger, I remember putting mullet in a bucket with no aeration, they might live 20, 30 minutes, which is longer than most other bait fish, but they're still going to suffer a lot. So having a good aeration system for your live bait is going to make the difference between being able to fish for five hours and fish for an hour, or having to go and catch more bait over and over again. But if you don't have an aeration system, that's okay little bubbler or just catch more bait when you need it that will do it hopefully you learned a little bit about how to catch live bait and if you've never done it before just get out there and try it the only way you're going to get better at throwing cast net is by doing it as much as you can and i myself am very mediocre at throwing cast net i just don't do it all the time but i've been doing it since i was a little kid so get out there throw the net and if you're struggling to catch big fish or a lot of fish Throwing a cast net is gonna be a game changer for you and you'll probably start catching a lot of big fish. When I was in high school, when I was about 17, that's when I really started using a lot of live bait and that's when I really started catching a lot of big snook and big jack. So, get out there, try it, do it, and let me know how it goes for you. I appreciate you guys very much. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, leave some comments below about you know, what other tip videos you wanna see, what type of videos you wanna see, and let me know if you thought this was helpful. I appreciate the heck out of you guys. Until next time, see ya.